evening, a 19th century guidebook described Bessers of the Barn as a quaint old Lancashire village delightfully situated on the Turnpike Road midway between Manchester and Bury. The village is now totally swallowed by ribbon development between the two towns, but it's still there and perhaps this band has done as much as anyone to keep it in the public eye. Bessers of the Barn Band was founded in 1815, well before any of our symphony orchestras, and it's staggering to think that Beethoven was still alive when the band began. Unlike Foden's, whom you saw last week, Bess's were not and are not a sponsored band. One of their historians, writing 70 years ago, put the matter more strongly. A village band of working men is Bess's, with no more advantages than are possessed by thousands of village bands in England. No gentleman pays a hundred pounds for a professional teacher for Bess's. No mill owner finds bogus work for a professional soloist to play with Bess's. Stern words indeed. One of the earliest prizes the band won was in 1821 for a rendition of the tune Hail Smiling Morn. They might have sounded and looked something like this. fashion stuff. Bessers really came to prominence at the turn of the century with a conductor who became a legend in his own lifetime. Under the baton of Alec Owen, the band won all the honours in sight. In 1892, almost unbelievably, they were the holders of every brass band challenge cup in Great Britain. They played for the King at Windsor and for the French President in Paris and they toured the world twice, once in 1906 and again in 1909. Owen specialised in arrangements of operatic selections and we're going to hear next a fragment of one of those original Owen arrangements. 
They say that the definition of a cultured man is one who can listen to Rossini's William Tell overture without thinking of the Lone Ranger. Here comes Bessie's band riding over the plains of Lancashire. spent our time so far in the past with Bess's, which is perhaps as it should be for a band with such a long and glorious tradition. Let's have a taste of something more contemporary now. In fact, a taste of Honey, one of the more lasting popular tunes of the last decade or so. This is an arrangement by the brand's present conductor, the multi-talented Frank Bryce, the featured euphonium soloist, Frank Johnson.
taste of honey. Some people might think that a rather unusual addition to the brass band repertoire. Not so, and indeed one of the things we hope will emerge from this series is some idea of the very wide range of music which the present day bands are actually playing. The next piece was written as a showpiece for the flashing fingers of the violinist virtuoso Yasha Heifetz. It's been rearranged here as a cornet solo for Bess's leader, Brian Mather. It was always a difficult test for a violin, and for the cornet, it's impossible. Unfortunately, no one's mentioned this to Brian, so here he is to play Hora Staccato. <laughs> That was a fragment of Promenade, a piece written and arranged by Frank Bryce. He says it started out as a part of a musical, but he didn't like the end result, so he took out the bits he did like and rearranged them as a specially commissioned test piece for the 1970 Wills Brass Band Contest in London. You'll have noticed the Lassie from Lancashire theme in the middle there. The original title of the whole work was Wigan Pier, but the organisers changed it to make it sound more respectable for the Albert Hall. In the past, 
Bands always played selections from current musicals and operettas. They still do today, although the flavour's a little different. From the musical Hair, here is Bessers of the Barn Band with Good Morning Starshine. <laughs> Frank Bryce thinks that one of the drawbacks of the present brass band repertoire is that too few of the best contemporary composers are allowed to contribute. Personally, I couldn't agree more, though there have been exceptions, of course. For instance, in 1932, John Ireland wrote the Downland Suite for the Crystal Palace Contest. Here is part of the elegy from that suite.
finally, finally, back to Alec Owen and those world tours by Bessies, which I mentioned earlier. You've got to remember, I think, that going around the world in 1906 was a complicated and hazardous business of ships, stagecoaches and trains. Doing it with a full brass band must have been murder. Nothing seems to have deterred Owen, however, and he actually wrote this next piece in the middle of the tour on the train to Rotorua in New Zealand. Pelorus Jack was the name given to the legendary dolphin reputed to guide ships into harbour. Here is Alec Owen's march, Pelorus Jack. Thank you. 